This is the legendary M1 MacBook Air that started this whole Apple Silicon revolution and that shook up the whole laptop industry and what forced Snapdragon and Microsoft to take ARM devices seriously and started the development of the Snapdragon X Elite to go straight against Apple. So today, four years after this launch with our beloved M1 MacBook Air that so many of you guys still use, does the X Elite actually defeat the M1 MacBook Air? And it might not actually defeat it in all the categories. And how much better of a device is this new machine that is actually our recommended X Elite laptop? Now here are the specs side by side. And the crazy thing is you can buy a brand new M1 MacBook Air for $699 right now. And the Surface Laptop 7 is basically double the price, but we also have more RAM, we have a larger SSD, and newer technology. Now, of course, we are gonna compare everything from the design to the screens, the webcams, benchmarks, and real-world performance along with battery life because both of these are charged up to 100% and I'm gonna go ahead and unplug them as we are starting our test. Now I wanna point out that the Surface does have a larger battery at 54 watt hours compared to 49.9 and even though we've used this MacBook Air quite a bit, it still has 99% maximum capacity so it is healthy. Now as you guys can see, the designs are interestingly very similar. We have the gold color. Of course the Mac has the black keyboard, I actually prefer the surfaces, trackpads look similar. And with these trackpads, the M1 MacBook Air had a killer one, it's magnetic, but the Surface now has the same exact one and it feels great. As far as the keyboard feel, both of them feel excellent. The Surface has a really nice keyboard. As far as weight, the MacBook is 2.8 pounds compared to three pounds for the Surface. And even though both of them have the wedge design, the Surface is just a little bit thicker. For ports, the Surface definitely wins. We have a USB type A port, then we have two USB four ports on the left-hand side compared to two Thunderbolt threes and the Surface also has that Surface Connect for charging, which you can also have some other accessories. So the MacBook is really basic and this older one does not have MagSafe. Now, as far as the speakers, that was one of the best things about the M1 MacBook Air. It had great speakers compared to Windows laptops. And you can see we have these grills on the sides, whereas the new MacBooks and the Surface, the speakers are hidden. So let's go ahead and see how far the Surface has come and if it can compete. Guys, I cannot believe this. I actually think that the M1 MacBook Air sounds better. Its overall volume is kind of similar, but the bass is better on this machine compared to a brand new system. Now, this does have good speakers, it's getting close, but it's crazy, this is four years old. Now, getting into the displays, the first thing that stands out is just how thick the bezels are on this M1 Air. When it came out, it wasn't bad, but the Surface has such thin bezels all around. And with that, we also have Windows Hello built into that display right up top, instead of having normal Touch ID. Now, as far as brightness, the MacBook is 400 nits compared to 600 for the Surface, so it is nice and bright, and because of that, when you're watching videos, especially HDR, the brightness really pops. The footage just really stands out and it looks really nice. Now, surprisingly, the MacBook has better contrast, so the blacks look deeper, and it's not just because it's lower nit rating, it's actually because it has a better anti-reflectivity coating on a four-year-old machine compared to the Surface, which is brand new, and that blew my mind. Now, the Surface does have a touch screen, so that could be one reason why. So if you like to interact with your display, you have that, where of course we don't have that on the Mac, and the Surface also has 120 hertz as far as the display with dynamic refresh rate that can go all the way down to 24 hertz to save battery life, compared to just being stuck to 60 on the Mac, 
But surprisingly, even though the Max display is slightly smaller, it actually has higher resolution than the Surface. And now let's compare the webcams and looking at the M1 MacBook Air's 720p webcam, Man, the quality does not look great. I forgot what 720p webcams looked like. And here is a Surface Laptop 7's 1080p webcam. As you guys can see, it looks a lot better. The whole image is wider. There's very little noise. The HDR looks better. Uh, and this also has dual front-facing microphones. And now we have really good noise reduction software built in as well. So you guys let me know what you think of the video quality difference as well as the microphone quality difference down in the comments below. And now let's get into performance. And the first thing that I want to test are the SSDs. We have a 256 gigabyte one here compared to a 512. That is four years newer. So let's see what kind of a difference we get. All right, guys, I was not expecting this. Our read speed is 3389 in the Mac compared to 3625. So the first surface is faster. But this M1 256 is faster than the M3 MacBook Air. That's crazy. And in terms of write speed, the MacBook is actually beating out the Surface by just a little bit. And if we look at some of these other tests here, the Mac beats out the Surface in a lot of them. That is insane. And now let's get into CPU performance. And I wanna point out that this MacBook Air is completely fanless compared to having fan cooling. We have eight gig versus 16. We have 3.2 gigahertz for the boost compared to four gigahertz. And the X Elite here has 12 performance cores compared to four performance and four efficiency. And we have that four generation gap, which is crazy. Let's just go ahead and run this. And we've already seen scores, but we'll see how much faster the X Elite is. All right, we have our scores and Qualcomm set out to beat the M1. And then as they were developing, they said they'll beat the M2. Now we see it here in terms of single core score, the X Elite is 15% faster than the M1. But in multi-core, we have a difference of 71%. That is a huge difference in CPU performance. Now the M1 Max were always very snappy, had very good web browsing performance. So I have speedometer 3.0 opened up right here, the newest test, and let's see how these compare. All right guys, we have a result and I was not expecting this. We have 28.6 on the M1 Mac compared to 27.6 for the X Elite, meaning that for web applications, as far as snappiness, how quick things load and run on the web, the M1 MacBook Air is actually a little bit faster. And now I have Figma opened up right here. And this is a project designed by 500 Designs, one of the best design studios in California. We have lots of high resolution layers and images. And I'm gonna start out with the M1 and we're gonna see how quickly and smoothly it runs. So that is loaded up right there. Nice and smooth for a four year old machine. Let's zoom in here. We got some pixelation. It's taking a little bit to load this up. There, it is done. Now let's go ahead and try it out with the surface. Of course, we have that 120 hertz screen, which is super smooth. Let's zoom into the same portion over here. Bam, definitely faster running this Figma app. And now I have 12 high resolution layers opened up right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and run the export to see how quick these systems are and how they compare. All right, we are done. So that took 151 on the surface in two minutes and three seconds on the M1 Air. And that's kind of surprising because we have an old chip that is a lot weaker but in this test, the performance is not that different. And now let's compare the graphics. This M1 Air has Apple's weakest Apple Silicon graphics in it. It is the seven core from the base model. And we have 3D Mark Steel Nomad Lite opened up right here. We are gonna run the regular mode just to compare these two systems. All right, guys, we have our scores and the X Elite did beat out the M1. We have 13.3 FPS compared to 14.6. So the difference really is 10%. I was hoping it'd be a bigger difference here because we have a four year gap. Uh, and if you did have the eight core graphics model instead of the seven core, so if you upgraded that, 
well then the Mac would actually beat the X Elite in terms of graphics. And now I have Blender opened up right here with the classic BMW test. And unlike the M3, the M1 does not have ray tracing just like the X Elite. So let's go ahead and compare this render. All right, that is done. And our M1 MacBook Air took two minutes and 12 seconds compared to four minutes and 19 seconds on the X Elite. Now, it's important to point out that we're not able to harness the graphics with the X Elite, so it has to use the CPU, whereas here, even though it's old and it has an old, weak GPU, we can use metal. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this one more time using CPU only on the Mac. Okay, the second test is done, and now in the CPU only, this took five minutes and 31 seconds instead of just over two minutes using graphics. That's a lot longer. Now the X Elite took longer this time as well, four minutes, 42 seconds, probably because of some frequency throttling that you get after extended periods of rendering with the X Elite. So the X Elite does beat this out in uh, CPU only, but of course you would use graphics if you have that capability. And now we have Cinebench 2024 opened up right here, which is gonna push both systems to the Mac, so let's go ahead and run it. Finally, this test is finished. The MacBook took forever and it got a score of 428 points compared to 879, so more than twice the performance with this X Elite. We saw 78% in Geekbench, but of course here, the MacBook Air, which is fanless, will throttle its performance because it gets really hot, and so we have this massive difference in performance. And now I have Adobe Lightroom Classic opened up right here. We're gonna do a few tests first. I'm just gonna go ahead and switch through these high resolution images, which all have a bunch of effects. And uh, even though the SSD speeds are close, you guys could see that the X Elite is rendering this quicker. Now let's test out the AI mask functionality. I selected the sky and let's see which one beats it out first. Looks like the M1 Mac found the sky quicker than the X Elite. Let's do one more of these here. How about we do the subject, which is the hot air balloon. Let's press it. And once again, the Mac quite a bit quicker. Yeah, maybe two to three times faster finding that subject and masking it. And now I wanna test Adobe's amazing super resolution AI enhancement. And here, the interesting thing is it's giving me an estimated time of nine seconds for the M1 and 25 seconds for the X Elite. And with that, just looking at this little preview, for some reason, it looks quite a bit sharper on the M1, but let's go ahead and test this. All right guys, it's already taking a lot longer on both of them. Um, way longer, maybe the eight gigs is limiting it on the M1, and it did beat it out. The X Elite took 46 seconds compared to 52 on the M1, and that's for running everything and creating that new file. And I have all 50 of these high resolution raw images selected, and I'm gonna export them to JPEG, and we'll see how long this takes. All right guys, it is finished, and the X Elite took two minutes and nine seconds compared to two minutes, 59 seconds for the M1 Air. Now I do wanna add that we have gotten two minutes and two seconds before. We think that this chassis is just really heat soaked right now because it's fanless and that Cinebench took forever to do. So those are the results. And now I have DaVinci Resolve 19 opened up on both of them with this 4K HEVC project that has effects applied to it. As you guys could see, both of these are able to play back this footage real time without any issues. And now I'm gonna do a stabilization test with one of these clips. Let's go ahead and hit stabilize. Looks like the Mac is done right when the X Elite got to the halfway mark. So definitely quicker at stabilizing using the graphics compared to the X Elite, which by the way, this is optimized as far as the program being made for ARM on Windows. And finally, let's go ahead and export this five minute project, HEVC to an HEVC clip, and both these do have dedicated encoders and decoders built into the chips. And looking at the top here, we have 27.5, 29 FPS, 30 FPS, 
compared to 83.585. So the Mac is definitely flying at this. All right, guys, we are done. And here the Mac took a minute and 32 seconds compared to four minutes and 11 seconds. That is 2.75 times faster with the base M1 MacBook Air and the seven core uh, graphics built in here. So that is a pretty massive difference. So it shows us that the media engine built into the X Elite just cannot compete with the one that Apple put into the M1. It is holding the system back. And now let's take a look at the battery life. We've been doing tests for hours now, pushing these systems to the limits. The MacBook has 37% battery life remaining. Let's take a look at the Surface laptop and we have 12% battery life remaining. So even though the Mac does have a smaller battery and on some of the tests like Cinebench, it took a lot longer to run and we actually had to install some programs. It's still a lot better in terms of battery life. This chip, even though it's older, it's very efficient. Uh, it sips power, it's fanless as well. Whereas the X Elite and CPU has a lot of performance, but it pulls a lot more uh, power as well. So that is a very interesting difference. Now, what did we find overall? Does the new X Elite destroy the M1? Well, in certain CPU tasks, absolutely it does. But then when we look at all around, if there are programs where you need a good media engine, where you need good graphics performance, well, that's where the X Elite starts to fall apart. Uh, in the gaming tests, it was barely faster. Uh, and this is Apple's weakest GPU. And then in some of the media tasks, it was quite a bit slower as well. So this Surface Laptop 7 with the X Elite, we really like this computer overall. The display, the speakers, the usability, the fact that you now get great battery life with the Windows system. So if you need a Windows laptop, something thin and light, office, office tasks, tasks that need the CPU, snappiness, it does a great job. But if you need good graphics performance, we would not go for that. And for uh, creative purposes, well, even the $699 M1 MacBook Air, I would say is probably the better choice, especially considering the price point or a newer Mac that has a little bit more performance. So you guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Is this what you were expecting? Click that circle above to subscribe for more great videos. Check out one of those right over there. This is Max and we'll see you in the next one.